to the savings after implementation that kind of goes along and shows what the particular savings are were on this particular job. So this is a 171,000 gross square foot building. Um, and believe it or not, it was a full K through 12, but a half of the building is still on the old pneumatic system. And we were still able to generate this amount of savings and um, drop the numbers down. Um, I don't know if you could see my mouse or not. When I start talking about baseline, this is one of the items well, you probably can't see it over here. If you look at the third one from the right, where it says BTU per gross square foot, that is basically identifying what your baseline is. And that's what I use as a tally or a quick indicator as to whether or not you guys have any potential or not. So let's bounce through a few more projects. Um, recommissioning, here was one where I did recommissioning existing high school. This particular one was in 1963. So we're getting even older yet. Uh, this is 120,000 square foot. This one had a newer building automation system, which was overlaid onto existing equipment. So um, I don't wanna put myself out there as being too old, but yeah, this was pretty old. Anyways, um, project costs, 27,000. Total project costs after incentive, we've got $7,000 in incentive on this particular one, it was 20 grand. Um, this one had a particular, uh, this particular project had an annual savings of 16,000, which itemized out to about 1.26 years payback. And again, a reduction in baseline by 114,000 kilowatt hours. Um, I think you guys can all relate to those particular numbers and those types of savings. Here's another recommissioning. This was uh, an existing elementary school up in Northeast Wisconsin, 97. This was only 46,000 square feet. This one had an annual savings of $9,000, $9,500 a year, reduction by 43,000 kilowatt hours and the therms themselves. So um, if you're looking at doing any kind of, oh, microgrids and such, these numbers, these reductions are gonna be a, a significant impact or will have a significant impact on those as well. Here's a ASHRAE level two audit that I had to perform. This was for an existing tribal wellness center slash daycare up here in, uh, would it be Eastern Wisconsin? Um, this particular one was only 25,000 square foot. Um, yeah, performing this level two audit itself was only 1850. Talked about the affordability, that's pretty affordable. Um, if fully implemented, the tribe, tribe would realize a reduction in baseline by 90,000 kilowatt hours. I say if fully implemented, um, they did a partial implementation. They did a building automation system a pneumatic to DDC upgrade, which I project managed for them as well. And they did realize a significant amount of these, but they didn't implement it all. So I can't lay claim to the full uh, 90,000 kilowatt hours. It was a pretty good chunk of it though. Um, in addition to this particular one, I've done a few others, uh, Bay Mills, Indian Health Services has brought me in to look at Bay Mills along with some of the Menominee tribe uh, uh, facilities. So. Um, so those are some of the ones that actually more, are more conventional style the, where we would find site savings at. And here's a couple of unexpected findings. And trust me, there are plenty more just like them. Um, hopefully I don't upset too many people here that might be in the geo industry or the lead industry. But if so, feel free to give me a call, call me all out on it and I can explain what I've seen. So here's a project that was in, um, it was a private middle school located in Georgia. So my business travels all over the country. I've been over in Washington, commissioning some hospitals over in Washington, DC, doing some fume hood uh, surveys, audits, and commissioning over in Boston, all the way down to Georgia. I've done some stuff down in Birmingham, Alabama. And furthest north is up the Bay Mills, Sault Ste. Marie area. So I kind of get all over the place. Anyways, this particular one was a LEED certified, supposedly. Well, not supposedly, it was LEED certified. Problem is, is they very rarely, um, engineers do a great job of selecting the equipment and they'll write up a, a host of sequences of operations and such, but they very rarely marry the two. They don't pay close enough attention to the the building automation system and how it's gonna work that mechanical equipment, it tends to become, uh, I guess, uh, yeah, it, it, they don't work very well together. And this particular project, though they had paid for commissioning and there, there were three three inch, um, three ring binders sitting on the table, none of them were filled out. So this is a uh, 
a system that shows that where there was a lack of commissioning. Um, so basically I went in, performed a facility assessment on the particular thing and which led to a preliminary audit. Once I saw what was going on here, I'm going, whoa, something, something is amiss. Um, when I turned this information over to the facilities management team, like the fourth bullet down there, they did not want to incur any of this cost of repairing any of this or bringing it up to speed on their, their maintenance contract. So instead of bringing this up to the owner, they opted to do absolutely nothing, which is a crying shame, but hey. Um, in any case, I went back through it and I did some rough uh, back of the napkin style app um, calculations here. I figured it'd be about $30,000 to go through a recommissioning of this. And that includes bringing the controls contractor back in and actually um, making the modifications that were necessary to make this thing work properly. That would result in uh, a, a very quick and easy one, one year simple payback. If this project had been commissioned properly to begin with, we were looking at roughly $500,000, I'm sorry, 500,000 kilowatt hours less than what it currently operates at. And trust me, that is being very, very conservative. They do a lot of cooling down there. The majority of their systems are cooling down there, but this particular system was, there were things that were miswired. They weren't recovering any energy that they were supposed to be. And it was discharging such cold air. When we went up on the roof, which was over hundred degrees that day, I would stand in front of the exhaust on this uh, energy recovery system. And I was cold. I was literally chilled out. So um, yeah, they were short circuiting air right down into the area and exiting right back out. And the air that was making it down, they were running their electric reheats. So there was a significant amount of energy being consumed. Um, again, this was a LEED certified building. Here's one where I did a facility assessment. Um, this one was, I was looked to ask at a geothermal system. Um, long story short, look at the very bottom of this thing, uh, before the geo system, they were spending a million on uh, energy. After the geo, they were spending 1.5 million. There was only a 10% increase in footprint in this particular facility, yet it went way up. Um, a lot of that had to do with the fact that they didn't understand or look at the baseline consumption of the facilities beforehand to see if they were first even, um, or if they could repair what was in the building. And they didn't, they didn't focus on that at all. They just went in, made the quick sale of, uh, let's go ahead and design a geo system and put it in at $6 million. Um, and it was expending more energy when it was all said and done than it had before. Um, they actually hired me back in to come in and they wanted to see which one of, what one of the facilities would do or one of the buildings would do when it went back to a conventional system. And that, particular building itself dropped the pricing down by 25. Um, the, the utility spend in that particular building dropped by 25%. So yeah, there are things that are out there that are going on that um, one wouldn't expect them to be, but they, they are there and they exist. So bottom line to my presentation here is uh, size doesn't matter, uh, nor does age. Uh, basically, savings potential exists everywhere. Be more concerned with the current baseline. Remember, every little bit of energy will reduce your baseline, reducing, redu resulting in dollar saved, first cost of renewables. And if renewables are in place, that'll stretch out the effectiveness of that system. Um, and last but not least, all funding sources discussed during this conference basically require some form of, some form of evaluation. So if you have questions or if you'd like to, assistance evaluating current consumption, basically reach out, reach out to me directly or schedule an appointment via the conference, excuse me, via the conference portal. Um, thanks for giving me the opportunity to present and thank you all for attending the conference. And last but not least, there's my contact information. Thanks, Tom. Um, if you would like to enter your contact information into the chat, feel free, but otherwise um, we're gonna turn it over to Brian with the National Indian Carbon Commission. Um, Brian, take it away. You are on mute. Let's see if I can unmute you. Hmm. 
Hmm. I don't know. Jake, can you help us out there? Try and unmute Brian. I clicked ask to unmute, but maybe I could also pull up Noresco's video if we want to get this sorted out offline. Sure. Yep. All right, Brian, we're going to switch order here so we can try and get you sorted while we play Noresco's video. Bonjour. I'm Lee Hammer, Tribal Market Leader for Noresco, and I'd like to talk to you today about how to reduce your energy and your carbon while updating your infrastructure. Today we'll be discussing several things. I've traveled around the nation, I've talked with many tribal leaders and found uh, that they have very common goals. So we'll discuss common goals. I'd also like to share what energy saving performance performance contracting is and what it can do for you. And then finally, I'd like to share some case studies uh, from Leech Lake and the Fond du Lac Band of Lake Superior Chippewa. So with that, let's begin. As I've met with tribal leaders um, at NCAI and at RES and with local tribal leaders, the same themes seem to come up. Many of the tribes will say, we want to leave the earth a better place for seven generations. They're very interested in natural resources conservation. Uh, they'd like to find more ways to generate renewable energy, address their deferred maintenance costs that are rising significantly, optimize the way they use their energy, reduce their greenhouse gas emissions, practice sustainability, train their people, and create jobs. So as we worked with Fond du Lac and Leech Lake, we were able to meet or exceed many of those goals, which we'll discuss a little further in, in the presentation. When you're looking at funding improvements from energy savings, there are many objectives that you can accomplish. Number one, reduce your energy and your water usage, create sustainability um, initiatives across your communities, attack deferred maintenance, and pursue modernization of many of your systems, moving to LED interior and exterior lights, doing HVAC modernizations, building automation modernizations and water conservation without using capital. It's a streamlined process for best value design build. You get secure guaranteed results. So as you can see on the graph to the right, the left graph in the dark blue is what you're paying your utility companies now. During a project, you'll see that there's a lighter blue that is your payment for the project and the smaller green is your energy savings. What's key here is at the end of the project and the performance period, all of those energy savings drop to the bottom line. So you can expect to see an average utility saving between 12 and 25%. And a lot of that percentage is based on how much um, energy conservation work you've already done. So let's talk about the energy saving performance based contracting process. It's very collaborative. The most successful projects have a team of people that work together to develop solutions that make the best fit to solve your needs. So let's look to the left at the preliminary assessment and analysis. This is the point at which we talk to building operators, building occupants. What are their pain points in the building? What are things that they'd like to see 
changed or updated. Um, then we go out and do an initial survey of all of the buildings. At the end of that data gathering session, we come back to the team with what I call the green, yellow, red list. All green items are energy conservation measures that pay for themselves. The yellow are those that may pay for themselves but need further investigation. And the reds are those that don't pay for themselves at all. Now, you may think it would be a good idea just to forget about the reds, but sometimes the team will decide that there is one strategy that's creating a lot of pain that needs to be updated. So they'll ask us to look into one or two of those in the red zone. Once we've looked at those and determined as a team what we want to go ahead with, we begin a detailed analysis. We're going to be asking you who are vendors that you worked with that have done a good job? Are there some that haven't done a good job? Um, we will bring in subcontractors. We like to use local subcontractors to give us some budgetary pricing on each one of the energy conservation measures. Once that information is all developed and compiled, we bring that back to the team. And as a team, we decide what should a project be comprised of? How many of these strategies do we want to make sure get done? Once we've determined that, then we complete the IGA, Investment Grade Audit, outlisting all of those strategies that we've determined are those we want to use. Um, at the same time, we're doing contract development and talking about financing the project. In many cases, customers like to self-finance. If not, we can do a financial bid for financing companies to help finance the project for you. After the project has been agreed to by the Travel Council, construction begins. During construction, we have a project manager that is 100% dedicated to the project. During the project, we train all your people on all the new systems and do a complete commissioning of every system. This is a turnkey implementation from the inception to the completion. And there are no change orders unless you request something specifically. So it's a fixed price contract that gives you not only the cost of the energy conservation measures, but the savings that are going to pay for it. And finally, we're with you through the life of the contract, doing measurement and verification of the savings to be sure that you're getting the savings. Now, I will tell you that over our 35-year history, Noresco has averaged 104% of our savings guarantee, which is a pretty good thing to have under our belt. So with that, let me talk a little bit about the kinds of things we do. We bring to your tribal community experts in distributed energy. We have dedicated teams for central plants, lighting, HVAC, building controls, water and sewer, and a wide array of, of renewables. So we can bring all of that to your doorstep to help you find solutions that best fit your goals. Now I'd like to share two projects that we've recently completed. The Fond du Lac Band of Lake Superior Chippewa has been, you know, very good about doing a number of energy conservation projects on their own. But they knew in order to reach their goal of becoming net zero, they were going to need some help. And that's when they called in Noresco. They did a $4.7 million project with annual savings of $772,000 a year. The simple payback on this was 6.1 years, although they decided to pay for it over a 10-year period. They did interior and exterior lighting on all the included buildings, and that was all LED with 20-year life expectancies of the, of the lamps. System-wide building automation system, high-efficiency boilers, updated chiller plant in one of their casinos, new air handling systems, and water conservation. The environmental impact of this was the equivalent of 1,559 trees being planted 
or the equivalent of taking 125 cars off the road. In this case, Fond du Lac saved over 24% of their energy bill and reduced their greenhouse gas emissions by 24%. Leech Lake Band also decided to do a project. Um, their project was 3.7 million. They garnered $265,000 in savings annually and did a contract term of 15 years. The highlights of that project are new boilers, guest room PTACs, which are packaged terminal air conditioning units in their hotel rooms, interior and exterior LED lighting, water conservation, some propane to gas conversions, and two locations of solar PV arrays. The environmental impact of this was the equivalent of 1,647 acres of trees planted, or the equivalent of taking 423 cars off the road. So you can see that there are some significant environmental impacts from these projects that helped the tribes to make the world a better place for seven generations. So with that, let me tell you a little bit about Noresco. Noresco's only business is energy saving performance contract. We've been in business for over 35 years, delivering over $5 billion in energy savings to our customers. When we work with the tribal communities, we look for energy savings between 12 and 25%. We find reductions in greenhouse gas emissions that are similar. Many of our tribal communities want to put in renewables to become more self-reliant and infrastructure modernization to make a, a means of getting deferred maintenance under control. And all of these energy savings and updates to your facilities are self-funded by the energy savings. So if you need to address deferred maintenance with those infrastructure modernizations, you wanna reduce your energy spend, reduce your greenhouse gas emissions, find more ways to employ renewables, please reach out to me for a deeper discussion on how I can assist you. If you have any questions, you'd like to do a virtual meeting, I will be here today, Tuesday and Wednesday from 11 to 3, and I will be available between 11 and 12 on Thursday. Um, after those times on Thursday and Friday, I will have my cohorts, Nicole and Kathleen, available to answer any questions you might, uh, might have. Miigwech. <clears throat> All right, uh, Brian, if you are unmuted now, feel free. Thank you. I think you have me now, don't you? Yes, we can hear you. Good deal. So. I appreciate the time today. I know we're running a little bit late, but I'd like to keep it uh, short and simple today. My name is Brian Van Stippen. I am the program director for the National Indian Carbon Coalition. The National Indian Carbon Coalition is a joint venture between the Indian Land Tenure Foundation that's based out of Little Canada, Minnesota, as well as the Intertribal Agriculture Council based out of Billings, Montana. So IAC and ILTF came together to create the National Indian Carbon Coalition back in 2010. I became the program director in 2017 after working at the Ho-Chunk Nation uh, for seven years as a legislative attorney. I started off in the Department of Justice, went over to legislature uh, to finish my career there. Um, so I'm a tribal attorney by trade and I'm a member of the Oneida Nation of Wisconsin. Uh, after I took the program director job at the National Media Recovery Coalition, we've uh, had a 2015 conservation innovation grant from the USDA in which we provided feasibility studies for tribal nations on the opportunity to develop carbon sequestration projects. Since that point in time, like Noresco, I've been working with the Fond du Lac Band of Lake Superior and Chippewa, as well as the Leech Lake Band of Ojibwe. We've conducted feasibility studies on their tribal natural resources to determine whether or not carbon sequestration projects would be economically viable. Uh, since that point in time, with the Fond du Lac Band, we have gotten approval from the Tribal Council to move forward with the actual development of the project. Uh, this will be the first project that the National Indian Carbon Coalition is a part of 
in the development phase. And we are working in conjunction with a project developer called Spatial Informatics Group, as well as the Nature Conservancy, who is assisting the National Indian Carbon Coalition in the marketing of the credits that we are going to be developing. One of the reasons why we feel that this relationship with SIG, as well as the Nature Conservancy, is important in Indian country is uh, the element of developing carbon projects in which tribes have had some questions about in the past, specifically on the compliance market, which is the California cap and trade market. You have to have a 100 year time frame for the carbon projects as a requirement underneath the California Air Resources Board, as well as a limited waiver of sovereign immunity, which some tribes have concerns with. Again, as a tribal attorney, I'm very familiar with the limited waiver of sovereign immunity. But the big one was allowing polluters to pollute. That was a question that a lot of tribes had that there was concerns about. So with this relationship with the Nature Conservancy uh, on the question of allowing polluters to pollute, the Nature Conservancy has a very stringent vetting process for buying groups, organizations that purchase credits through the Nature Conservancy. And they are now working with the National Carbon Coalition to provide uh, those buyers with information on tribal projects that we are developing, again, specifically the Final Life Band, as that is one of the first ones that we are moving forward with. We also work with the Kiwana Bay Indian community. Uh, their tribal council has also approved a carbon sequestration project. So we are a little bit behind uh, Fond du Lac in the development phase, but by the end of 2021, we are looking at having those two projects certified, verified, in which carbon sequestration credits will be developed and for sale for buyers. And we are currently meeting with buying groups to purchase. Uh, Jake, are you able to check that connection? Brian, uh, we lost you. Yeah, Brian, unfortunately, it seems like we lost your connection. Is he still on? Well, I still see him, but I don't hear him. Oh, no. Um, well, while we're waiting to see if he can come back on, um, everybody, you know, if you have any further questions, feel free to contact everyone who has presented today. Um, Brian uh, does have a page on the exhibitor page. So, you know, please navigate over to that and you'll be able to see more about the about ILTF and the National Indian Carbon Commission. Um, I'm not sure if we'll be able to get him back on. Jake, how's it looking? Yeah, Brian, I, I think there must be a connection error because we lost your audio. Um, if we don't get you back soon here, I think what we can do is again, record a full video, Brian, so we can get it up posted to the website along with the others. Oh, it looks like you might be back, Brian. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep my video off. Maybe that's been part of the issue. I've never had this before where my audio keeps kicking out. Um, but anyway, uh, working with Leech Lake, we are in the same process of doing the, the completing the feasibility and moving forward with uh, hopefully presenting the travel council here before the end of the year, but with Keweenaw Bay, Indian community and the final life band of Lake Superior Chippewa. Those are the two projects that we have that will be making major PR announcements here in the next few months, again, in conjunction with uh, the assistance in the selling those credits with the Nature Conservancy. Uh, we are adding more travel projects throughout the United States. Uh, we are working with the tribe in the southeastern part of the state, uh, actually working with the Native Hawaiian group, as well as with the Alaska Native uh, Regional Corporation. So we do service all of Indian country um, as well as First Nations out of Canada. And so we're continuing moving forward with those. One of the other interesting projects that we have going on with uh, the National Indian Carbon Coalition is a joint project with MTERA, uh, in which we have received a Minnesota State Card Grant for the Conservation Innovation Program. Um, we are doing a study on utility usage by tribes and tribal members throughout the state of Minnesota, uh, Bruno and Jake have been instrumental in developing that data and, and helping assist and host advisory committee meetings with all 11 tribes based in the state of Minnesota. Um, and we are more recently uh, have developed 
and been approved for an OEI grant through the state of Wisconsin with the Lucuda Ray uh, tribe. And so we're just getting that project started as well. So through the National Indian Carbon Coalition, we have some federal grants, we have some state grants. The good thing for Indian country is if there's interest, all of the work and services that we provide are free, free to the tribes. So if there's interest in getting a feasibility study completed for a carbon sequestration project, whether it be a forest-based project or a soil-based, basically grape land or agricultural land, that would be at no charge to the tribe. And then uh, the same with entering into a carbon project. Currently, the Indian Land Tenure Foundation, my parent organization, is covering all of the upfront costs so that there is no money coming to the table to reduce the tribal risk. So if we do get a feasibility study is completed and there's a determination that this is an economically viable project and the tribe is interested in moving forward with that project, uh, we will then enter into a separate agreement in which there is no cost to the tribal nation as well. So it's, we're trying to make this program as easy as possible. Uh, we are there the entire duration of the project. We vet the third party consultants that we work with. Uh, we work with all of the buying groups and negotiate those contracts for the best interest of the tribe at a credit rate of no less than $10 per credit. We believe that we can get a premium on top of those credits uh, as they are tribally based projects. And then as well as covering those upfront costs so that the tribe does not have to come to the table with any capital to get these projects moving forward. Um, so we have a lot of things going on at the National Indian Carbon Coalition. Feel free to check out our website. Feel free to contact me. We are a member of the uh, MTERA, obviously, um, and Jake has my contact information. If you have any questions about carbon projects and, and want any references, I would like to think that uh, Bruno Zager from Fond du Lac would be more than willing to provide any recommendations. Um, so I would greatly appreciate uh, any opportunities if there's interest out there feel free to reach out to me and you can see what type of services we might be able to provide to your tribal nation. Awesome, thank you, Brian. Brian, we actually do have one question here for you before we uh, move on. Uh, what is the current price for RECs and do you see it having much volatility in the near future? So Rex, or renewable energy credits are a little bit under market in my opinion. We were working again with Fond du Lac to try to some, sell some of their solar RECs and it was something along like 81 cents a credit. It just wasn't worth uh, trying to find a buyer for Rex. But uh, what we have been trying to develop is utilizing Rex or green tags or other types of opportunities and creating more of a holistic approach and selling them as one, one umbrella under our carbon credit. So if you have, uh, and again, actually we're doing this a little bit with, uh, with the United Nations, um, like Troji, and his group were working with them to do a, an analysis on a little bit of forested land, a little bit of agricultural land, and then some of the energy efficiency projects that the United Nation has done and determining whether or not we could include all of those projects under one holistic umbrella to sell the, as a carbon credit. And they are now developing programs in which we can do that. So if your tribe has worked on an energy efficiency project that we heard the hammer from the rest of discuss, uh, there is an opportunity there to include that into a carbon credit project and try to sell that at a premium rate. Um, so there is interest out there from buying groups. We just have to ensure that the protocols that are developed uh, adhere to the, the science and the data that is being generated by the tribe. But we believe that these are some good opportunities for tribal nations out there to roll RECs or solar RECs or white tags or green tags all into a carbon credit. So again, if there's any other questions that anybody has out there, you know, feel free to reach out. We look at energy efficiency, whether tribal housing weatherization projects, methane capture, uh, electric vehicle generation, compressed natural gas, uh, all kinds of different opportunities out there, depending on what your tribal nation is doing. Awesome. All right, thank you so much, Brian. And uh, thank you to everybody else as well. Uh, I saw Chris had to hop off for a different call, but um, Chris, Andrew, Tom, and Brian, you all had great presentations. Um, I think if anybody else has any other questions, again, they do have those exhibitor pages available on the mterraconference.org website under the exhibitors uh, tab. Um, and there you should be able to find some contact information for everybody who presented today. 
Um, so if you have any further questions, please direct them there. Uh, and we really want to thank all of our associate members and exhibitors today for supporting MTERA and for working with us in our goal moving towards uh, renewable energy and energy sovereignty. Um, and with that, I just want to thank everybody for attending our conference today and for the past three days. Um, as a reminder, tomorrow we do have some workshop sessions with the National Renewable Energies Lab. Uh, I think those are going to be some really productive conversations. So if you are interested, please also attend tomorrow where we will be having some presentations and then some uh, conversations with everybody in attendance. So come bring your questions and we look forward to seeing you there. So thank you again, everybody. And this brings us to the end of the day.